Proudly we hail. And now another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Final Choice, and it's a story of a man's fatal decision, a decision involving life or death. We'll be ready with our first act in just a moment after a few words from Ken. Registered nurses volunteer for service with the Army Nurse Corps. There are immediate assignments open in this country and overseas, and only qualified graduate nurses can fill them. Write or wire the Surgeon General... Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Richard Starr, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Final Choice. The man who called himself Richard Starr arrived in the rural village of Abbotsford at the tag end of a hot, oppressive midsummer's day. He arrived unannounced, unknown, and introduced himself to Jed Moore, the town clerk and general factotum of Abbotsford. My name is Starr, Richard Starr. Starr, eh? That's a good name. <laughs> kind of bright. I'm Jed Moore, not so bright, just hot. Mmm, been a scorcher, all right. I've been sitting here watching them clouds pile up over there. They've been doing it for a week now. Pile up into regular thunderheads, but that's all. Sit down, Mr. Starr, and tell me what I can do for you. Maybe with the two of us watching them, we can coax a little rain out of them. Do you have a doctor in Abbotsford, Mr. Moore? Eh? Ain't sick, are you? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Now, let's see. The nearest doctor is over in Linden. That's about uh, 12, 14 miles from here. Mm, you're really off the beaten track. Yes, I suppose we are. <laughs> kind of nice. Nobody bothers us. Most of the people around here are farmers, aren't they? Most. Good land, even with the hills. Yeah, I can see that. You think you could use a doctor around here? Well, any place could use a doctor, Mrs. Starr, but I don't know how one could afford to live here. Two things against it. Folks are healthy, but poor. <laughs> Unbeatable combination. You a doctor? That's right. Hmm. You a good doctor? Good as I can be. How come you pick a place like this? Oh, I don't know. I've had enough of cities. I want a little peace and quiet. <laughs> My doctor ordered it. Well, you wouldn't starve, that's a fact. Folks could give you food if they couldn't give you money. As a matter of fact, you could go to work right now. What do you mean? Tom Grover's wife, Mary, has been sick for a week now. Tom doesn't think much of doctors, hasn't bothered to get one over in Linden. But I saw him this morning, and he seemed pretty worried. Thought I'd drop around tonight myself, and if Mary wasn't better, I'd call the doctor over in Linden no matter what Tom said. Why don't you and I take a drive out there right now? Good idea. I'll get my bag. And I'll lock up here. You know, it's funny. I don't often forget a face. I'd swear I'd seen you someplace before. That's funny. I don't ever remember seeing you. <laughs> Evening, Tom. Howdy, Jed. How's Mary? About the same. Tom, this is Dr. Starr. He's come to live in Abbotsford. How about letting him have a look at Mary? Doctor, huh? I don't hold any truck with doctors. If I can help, I'd like to. That's it. I don't think you can help. When Billy got sick, we had a doctor. Had four doctors. Billy died. I don't know whether the doctors killed him or not, but they sure didn't save him. If I can't help your wife, I'll tell you. If I can, I'll tell you that. Won't lose anything by letting me have a look at her. That's straight enough, Tom. All right. Come on in the house. Uh, 
Well? How close is the nearest hospital? Melrose, 20 miles. Glover, your wife has a ruptured appendix. If we take her to Melrose, she may die before we get there. If I operate here and now, there's a possibility she may live. If I don't operate, we don't try to take her to Melrose, she'll die before tomorrow. Die? You wanted it straight, that's it. How can you operate here? You two will have to help me. Is there a house that kids can stay at? Sure, the Adams will take them in. Well, what about it, Glover? You don't have much time. What shall it be? You say the trip to Melrose might kill her. The sooner she's operated on, the more chance she has to live. You kill my wife Listen, and I'll... you fool. If you hadn't been so pig-headed and had gotten a doctor when she first got sick, she wouldn't be in the spot she is now. If she dies, it'll be nobody's fault but your own. I'm not the Almighty. I can't guarantee to save her. All I can do is try. Make up your mind. Have, uh, have you ever done an operation like this before? Yes, I've, I've done operations like this before. In much worse conditions. All right. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Like a cigarette? No, no, no thanks. Will she, uh, live? Don't know. Done everything I can. Now it's up to her and, and the penicillin. Well, these new drugs are wonderful, aren't they? Good thing you had some with you. Came prepared. Thanks for all you did, Mr. Moore. You were a big help. Most folks around here call me Jed. All right, Jed. You might as well go home now. I'll stay here until morning anyway. Stay with you if you like. No, no, no point in it. I'll just sit here on the porch a minute, and I'll go in and stay with her. You sure knocked Tom out fast. Mm, he needed sleep. What about you? <laughs> Haven't you heard? Doctors never sleep. Kind of a lucky thing for us you showed up here. Yeah. Lucky for me, too, Jed. <laughs> Uh, Tom poured the ether, and I held the light, and he stood there like a rock and did the whole thing. I never saw anybody's hand move so fast and so sure. Don't you think it's odd, though, his showing up here like this? Well, maybe it is, Joe, but I figure that's his business. <laughs> All right, Daddy. But don't you think everyone in town is going to make it theirs? <laughs> Everybody but us. Yeah, it's really quite thrilling. A man arrives out of nowhere and says he's a doctor. He doesn't have to say it. I will. He's quite a fellow, whoever he is. It's about time I drove out to Thompson and found out how things are going. Can I come? <laughs> Wouldn't be curious, would you? <laughs> I certainly would. <laughs> All right. Drink up your coffee and come along. Morning, Tom. How's Mary? Doc says she's th he thinks she's going to be all right. He's in with her now. Stayed up all night. Good morning, Joe. Maybe I could go in and help. Won't hurt to ask. She's in the front room. Hello. Who are you? I'm Joe. Joe Moore. Anything I can do? She's asleep. Uh, you know anything about nursing? A little. I could take care of her all right. She's going to feel pretty rotten for a while. She's going to be all right. Mm, if there aren't any other complications. Mm. If you could stay for the day, I'd come back this evening. I I'll tell you what to do. You certainly have started off with a bang here, haven't you? <laughs> Regular firecracker. <laughs> Let's hope I don't disturb too many people. <laughs> oh, another hot day and another hot night. Have you found a place to stay? Yeah, your father took me all around and introduced me to a lot of people. I'm going to rent the Sloan's cottage mm -hmm. for the rest of the summer anyway. Have you had any sleep yet? I, mean, I got a little this afternoon. Your father's been very helpful. So have you. <laughs> we Moors are very helpful people. Do you mind if I ask you what everyone's going to be wondering? What's that? What are you doing here? What made you come to this place? You like it here, don't you? Well, sure, but this is my home. You don't mind if I make it mine? <laughs> no, of course not. Every town needs a doctor, but... Well, then, let's just say I'm Habitford's new doctor. And let it go at that. In other words, it's none of my business. Well... Is it? <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, it isn't. But if you know anything about small towns, you know everyone's going to try and make it their business. That's a chance I'll have to take. Chance? Yeah, you see, uh, 
I'm really a hatchet murderer, but I'm so adept with my tools that I double as a doctor. All right, I'm sorry. I won't say anything more. Suppose I ask a question. Do you work for a living? Oh, I take care of the house and help out as a secretary down at the town hall. Think you'd like to help me out, too? Act as a sort of nurse? Oh, but I'm not really a nurse. I know that, but you could help. Maybe a couple of hours a day. The pay will be rotten. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Let me think about it. I'll let you know after supper. Fine. I'll come over. Come over? Oh, didn't I tell you? You are invited to a very formal dinner of leftovers at the Moors. <laughs> ah, no, you didn't. But let's not argue about it. I accept. <laughs> well, maybe this will break the heat. Golly, I hope so. Anybody else to see us? No, he was the last. Why don't you come for supper? Getting to be a habit. Well, if we don't complain, why should you? Oh, I don't like to impose. I wouldn't invite you if you were. All right, Joe, I'll come. Maybe you'd rather not. Joe, what's the matter? Nothing. Well, then stop acting like a two-year-old. I'd love to come to supper. You're a wonderful cook. Your father's a character out of a book, and I enjoy spending my evenings with you. There. That enough? <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess it's the heat. Come on, let's go. All right. Oh, I gotta stop in and see uh, Mrs. Meeker first. You go ahead. There's nothing wrong with her. Well, she's old and lonely. She needs someone to complain to. All right, Mr. Anthony. But don't be late. I'm never late. Now, who's that? Come in. Yes, can I help you? Doctor in? No, he left a few minutes ago. Is there anything I can do? Mind if I sit down? Well, it's kind of hot. No, go right ahead. Thanks. Name is Quayle. How long the doctor been here? You mean here in Abbotsford? About a month and a half. Why? Is he a good doctor? Well, there are people around here who'll tell you there isn't any better. I guess there aren't. Mind if I smoke? Who are you? What do you want with Dr. Starr? Starr, eh? Nice name. My name is Quayle. Came all the way from New York. Been a long time on the road. It's hot. This look like Dr. Starr? Hmm? Why, yes, that's his picture. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Here's my picture. Henry Quayle, police... De you're, you're a policeman. Detective. What, what do you want to see Dr. Starr for? Got a little unfinished business. Will he be back here? No, no. He, uh, he went to Melrose, to the hospital there. He uh, won't be back till late. Uh, just my luck. Well, I guess I'll have to drive over to Melrose. Passed through there, didn't I? Uh, yes, yes. So you, you follow Route 46. What's the unfinished business you have with the doctor? You ask an awful lot of questions, lady. Well, let's just say that it's a slight case of murder and let it go at that. Murder? Yeah, murder. M-U-R-D-E-R. Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Richard Starr in the proudly we hail production of Final Choice, will return for the second act in just a moment. Registered nurses, here's a chance to be of service to your country and to yourself. The Army Nurse Corps has opportunities for you. As a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances, you'll have excellent chances to further your career. You'll have the benefit of working with some of the finest equipment in the world and of learning the newest techniques in the medical profession. So get all the facts today. Write or wire the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now your Army and your Air Force present the second act of Final Choice. What's the matter, Joe? Cat got your tongue? Hmm? No, no, I was just thinking. <laughs> well, don't do it too much. 
put wrinkles in your head. Hey, Dick? Much too pretty a head to put wrinkles in. Well, it's about time we had this. I think I'd better go upstairs and check the windows. Ah, that was a good dinner, honey. Ate too much. Well, that was close. Dick, you've got to get out of here and right away. Huh? Just after you left, a man named Quail came. He was looking for you. He was a police detective. I told him you'd gone over to Melrose. I see. Well, that was nice of you, Joe, but you shouldn't have done it. No point in getting yourself in trouble. Well, I guess that's that. I thought maybe I'd given them the slip, but they're too smart. Dick, what is it you've done? Please tell me. Joe, I killed a man. I shot him deliberately. Oh, no. But why? It's a long, messy story. Had a kid sister. Got mixed up with the wrong man. He drove her insane. I killed him. It's as simple as all that. I thought maybe I could get away with it. I see I can't. I'm not going to run any farther. Dick, they'll send you to prison. I suppose so. You take the law into your own hands, I guess you pay the penalty. We'll get a lawyer. Dad'll know just what to do. You're very kind, Joe. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you before. Kind. Kind. Oh, Dick, how blind can you be? Don't you know that Never mind what I know. Never mind what I feel. It's just too late. It was too late when I came here. It always will be. The sooner you forget it, the better. It isn't... It isn't something you forget. Stop looking at me like that. Time takes care of a lot of things. We'll tell your father, and I'll go home, and I'll wait for quail. You'll probably want to leave tonight. Yeah, better that way. You came here unexpectedly. You leave the same way. That's right. I'll get it. Well, Joe, I'm sorry I couldn't last. I like it here. Like the people. Like a rock. That's what Dad said you were the night that you operated on Mary Glover. Like a rock, inside and out. Don't you have any feelings? Maybe you've hidden them for so long that you've lost them. Let's say I have. Let it go at that. Dick! Dick, you've got a rush call. That was Myers. Lightning struck a tree in front of his place, and the tree fell on the car. Fell inside, is all smashed up. How awful. Who was it? Well, nobody from around here. Sam said his name was Vale or Quail or something. What are you going to do? If I operate, I've got a chance. A good one. If you don't? That's obvious. Is it? What do you mean? You know what I mean. I have to operate. Cause more questions not to. Would it cause questions if Mr. Quayle didn't survive? Stop it. What's the matter with you? You want to be a party to a murder, too? Don't. Your hands are hurting. I'm sorry. I shouldn't talk that way. I know it. I shouldn't think this way either, but I can't help it. Think of that man in there wanting to take you to prison, and I'm willing to do anything to keep you here. Anything. No, you're not. You're just upset. Upset. You'll have to help me. Upset. We'll use a table in the kitchen, Mrs. Myers. Don't you realize that if that man in there dies, you'll be free? Get hold of yourself once and for all. If you don't, you have to leave. Of course I realize it. I'd never be free. This man hasn't done anything to me. He's just doing his job. I'm going to do mine. You're going to help me. You understand? Yes. Yes, I understand. Even if I was tempted, it would be useless to send someone else out here. Joe, look at me. If there was any other way out, if there was any chance for us, I'd take it, but there just isn't. Now, oh, dry your eyes and help me wash up. Hi, Doc. Long time no see. <laughs> Sorry, it couldn't have been longer. <laughs> Didn't think you could give Henry J. Quayle the slip, did you? You and the rest of the police department? No, just me. I'm on my vacation. Nobody knows about this but me. You're an awful fool to tell me. That tree gave me quite a thump. Knocked me screwy. Guess I'm not going to make it anyway. If the operation is a success, 
You'll make it. <laughs> be interesting to find out whether I'll wake up in this world or the next. Save your breath. Yeah. Slip of my hand wouldn't make any difference. Either of us. All right, Joe. Start pouring the ether. I'd be willing to do anything to keep you here. Anything. Nobody knows about this but me. Scalpel. You'll be free. Sponge. Wake up in this world or the next. Swab. Nobody but me. Nobody but me. Nobody but me. There's a lot of trees down on the roads, Dick. They called from the hospital in Melrose and said they wouldn't be able to get an ambulance through before morning. Ah, oh, that's all right. He couldn't be moved before that anyway. Is he, uh, gonna make it? Oh, yes. He'll make it. A beautiful piece of work, true to Dr. Starr's form. His hands were steady as rocks, weren't they? That's right. You better take her home, Jed. She's tired. No, I'm staying here. There's nothing for you to do, Joe. Oh, yes, there is. I'm staying. What about it, Dick? I can't make her go. Say, what's the matter with you two? Maybe Dr. Starr can diagnose the case. Whatever it is, it's incurable. It's nearly morning. Wouldn't it be nice if the night would go on? Yeah. Well, maybe we can have a week or two before your patient gets on his feet. Will you marry me? No. I don't suppose many girls ask and get turned down. Why not? Do you want the name of a criminal? I don't care anything about a name. I want you. <laughs> Persistent, aren't you? Very. Over the man I love. Joe. Joe. Save me. Save your love. It isn't mine to save. I've given it to you, and you can't give it back. Come here. You see what I mean? I suppose you feel fine. Stinko. <laughs> Quite a surprise. What? Didn't figure I'd wake up in this world. Hmm. You don't have much confidence in me. Yeah, I thought I'd had it. Don't remember too much besides that. Guess I owe you my life. I'll send you a bill. You know why I came out here? Well, even if you hadn't been so clear on it last night, I still might have been able to guess. It's all kind of hazy, like I'd had a load on. You had a load on, all right. Yeah, a load of lumber. <laughs> Dr. Starr. Sounds pretty good. Better in the old way. Yeah. Well, what's the pitch on me? How long do I get laid up? Ambulance is coming from Melrose. They'll probably keep you in the hospital over there for a couple of weeks. You gonna be my doctor? Don't tempt me. I can only stand so much. You thought I came up here to take you back, didn't you? Well, wasn't that the general idea? You could have finished me last night and no one would ever have been the wiser. You never know how close I came. You knew I was on vacation? Mm, you were quite talkative. You're quite a guy, aren't you? That's what my girl tells me. <laughs> the one who sent me to Melrose? That's right. She wanted me to cut your throat. Now, I, I may yet. Nothing like a dame. Pretty, too. <laughs> You've talked enough. I'm going to put you to sleep. Well, that'll be nice. Oh, something you might like to know before you do. Uh, I didn't come up here to pinch you. I came up here to tell you you were free. If, if this, this is your idea of a joke, I'll... I don't go around taking guys on my vacation. You didn't kill Roman even though you thought you did. It was a frame. When Roman dared you to shoot him, he handed you a gun full of blanks. You lost your head, and you let him have the whole gun full. He played dead, thought it was a big joke. His pal Ziggy knew all about it. In fact, he was there when you came in. He owed Roman a lot of money. After you'd left, he filled the gun with real bullets, and goodbye, Roman. 
Well, but do you, <laughs> do you mind if I sit down? How did you find this out? Oh, we cops aren't so dumb. How long have you known it? Oh, a week or so. And how did you know I was here? No, you're worse than a woman. Put me to sleep, Doc. When I wake up, I'll tell you. Put you to sleep? <laughs> Brother, am I going to take care of you? Yeah, well, just put that thing down till your hands stop shaking. This is what I get for being a nice guy. And on my vacation. Joe! Joe! <laughs> Come in here and help me. The rocks turn to water. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return with a word about next week's program in just a moment. There is an urgent need for trained nurses in our expanding Army Nurse Corps. Colonel Mary G. Phillips, chief of the Army Nurse Corps, recently had this to say. I have a very important message for all the civilian nurses of our country who can be spared from their jobs during the present emergency. As you know, the Army Nurse Corps needs volunteers, and it needs them urgently. Many more nurses are needed to provide our soldiers with the medical care they must have in order to do their jobs. You can serve your country well in the Army Nurse Corps and at the same time advance yourself professionally. There are many opportunities for postgraduate training in anesthesia, operating room management and technique, nursing administration, and many other fields. The opportunities for advancement are practically unlimited. Learn all the facts about the Army Nurse Corps. Write or wire the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. And remember, the need is now. Colonel Phillips' message is indeed urgent. And we urge you civilian nurses to get all the facts. The address again, the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Right today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy as Joe Moore was Helen Christen. Final Choice was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking.